The skill and craftsmanship in forming metals, whether to please the eye or to serve a functional purpose, have always been a challenge to imagination and ability. Craft and craftsmen separated into guilds to uphold their standard and to protect their craftsmanship. Silversmiths, ironmongers, and gunsmiths form their guilds as they continue to form their craft. In today's world of Army aviation, the ancient art of forming metals is still applied. Forming of metal for aircraft repair requires knowledge in selection of metals, skill in forming, and imagination in solving the repair requirement. Whether it be yesterday's silver or today's aluminum, the forming is still needed to fulfill the intended purpose, a silver goblet or a streamliner for an aeroplane. The more knowledge you have of the metal, its strength and malleability, the better off you will be in solving the problem and gaining respect within your profession of airframe repair. Recognition and respect of your craftsmanship will come with practice and application, and you will follow in the footsteps of historic creative craftsmanship that is being admired in today's new world of aviation. you take in your new profession will bring you closer to a craft that has a history of yesterday and an opportunity of tomorrow. The knowledge you acquire can save critical situations, help solve problems with limited materials, and get an aircraft in the air that would otherwise be grounded. The ability to form aluminum is an important part of aircraft maintenance and repair. The proper tools for scribing marking, cutting, filing, forming. Plenishing, trimming, and bending are required. In selecting the metal, be sure it is the same alloy as the part you're replacing, and in the temper that will withstand the forming operation. Metal is like a woman. Too much heat may harden her, so she won't bend. Just enough heat may soften her, and she'll bend easily. The metal has a numbering system that identifies the thickness, the alloy, and temper. Extensive forming requires that the material used is in the annealed condition, then heat treated before installing the finished part in the aircraft. Aluminum is an alloy. Most alloys consist essentially of two or more metallic elements. However, non-metallic elements such as carbon, oxygen, and sulfur can also be found in an alloy. Here you see aluminum alloy 2024O, the aluminum we'll be using in this film. Unless you know her alloy, you will never be able to deal with her properly. You may become a slave of her mixture or a master of her property.
Aluminum comes in different alloys and conditions depending on the tempering and the condition of the alloy. The numbering system employs the use of letters following the alloy numbers to indicate the condition. O for annealed, T for heat treated. In short, is it soft? Or is it hard? How much bending and stress can the metal take? Regardless of alloy, its strength and flexibility, aluminum is one of the most important metals in aircraft structure and repair. Here you see a selection of tools that you will be using in aluminum forming for aircraft repair. Measuring tools, holding tools, striking tools, cutting tools, and forming blocks. Forming blocks consist of a form block and a clamping block. The feature of the forming blocks are proper bend radius and undercut for spring back. The reason for the undercut is the natural spring back of the material. When you want a 90 degree angle, the material must be bent beyond 90 degrees to accomplish a finished 90 degree angle in the material. The sandbag is another means of forming aluminum. But the most common method is the use of the forming block. Using the sandbag is one of the most difficult methods of forming aluminum. You have no structured guidelines to assist you, except the feel, the sight, and your own judgment in where to hit the metal and when to stop. To help you in determining the shape of the metal, templates will assist you in achieving measurements required. Remember the sandbag should always be on a solid foundation. Be sure you have the pit in the sandbag well established before you start hammering away. When repairing a streamliner or any other damaged part in airframes, check your metal, alloy, and condition. Be sure the fabrication is the same. You check that by comparing numbers of the metal you're repairing and the metal you select. The system numbering should be the same. Forming blocks are usually made from wood. Wood lends itself naturally for making forms for hand forming of aluminum. If you don't have the proper block at hand, make one to fulfill the needed requirement. A good example of an item that is frequently repaired and replaced is the streamliner.
shrinking may be accomplished by the V-block method or the shrinking block method. The V-block is generally more satisfactory. It is faster, easier, and affects the metal less. When shrinking on the V-block, use a soft-faced mallet. Place one flange of the angle strip flat on the V-block and the other flange extending upwards. Hold the metal firmly so it doesn't bounce when hammered. Strike the edge of the upper flange with light blows. Begin at one end of the angle strip and work back and forth, striking soft blows over the V-shape in the V-block. As the curve develops, check it for accuracy with a pattern that you made before you started shrinking. Formed and extruded angles can be curved by stretching or shrinking either of the flanges. Curving by stretching one flange is usually preferred. This process requires only a V-block and a mallet. The stretching and aluminum forming can be easily accomplished on a V-block. Place the flange in the groove of the V-block. Use a mallet and strike the flange directly over the V-portion in the block. Strike with light, even blows and gradually force the aluminum downwards into the V-opening. If you strike too heavily, it will buckle the angle strip. Keep moving the angle strip across the V-block. Strike the spot directly above the V-opening and strike the metal gently. Form the curve gradually and evenly as you move the strip slowly back and forth over the V. Master your blows and it becomes V for victory over aluminum forming on the V-block. Shrinking and stretching can also be accomplished by using machines. Okay. Stretching machines have different types of stretching jaws for the purposes you want to accomplish. The basic principle in stretching is to force the metal to expand from the center point of strength outward towards the edges of the piece of aluminum you're forming. As the stretching force is applied to the metal, it becomes thinner and thereby stretches. The mathematical concept, principle of force and resistance is simple. The force and form applied shows the effect. What the challenge is, how much stretching can you do, and when to stop for the stress anticipated. The shrinking machine is the same machine as the stretching machine. The jaws are different. As you become more familiar with your tools and aluminum, we don't have to tell you what makes it shrink and what makes it stretch. Aluminum is an alloy. Let's call her Miss Alloy. And what's her phone number? 2024. This is the result of shrinking with a soft mallet and a V-block support. Here is the result of aluminum shrunk in a shrinking machine. This is the result you get when the metal has been stretched on a V-block. And here is the result of metal that has been stretched in a stretching machine. Stretching and shrinking can be accomplished either by a soft mallet 
and a V-block or a machine. Here you see an example of beading. The purpose of beading is to increase the structural strength and rigidity in the material. Crimping is another method of curving formed angles by shrinking. Crimping can be done by various methods using hand tools, and clamping blocks. If you don't have crimping pliers, you can use a mallet to achieve the necessary crimping form required. When forming curved flange parts, remember the concave flange, which is actually the outside flange, is formed by stretching. The convex flange is formed by shrinking. Flanged parts are formed on forming blocks made of metal or of hardwood. All blocks are made for a particular part to be formed. Each block fits its counterpart exactly. They are designed to the actual dimensions and contour of the finished article. Blocks are held together by C-clamps or a vise. Small dents are removed by using a planishing hammer and a suitable stake. In forming aluminum, remember Miss Alloy and her various telephone numbers, the listed as well as the unlisted. Take Aphrodite. God created her. Man formed her. How was she formed? And what is her alloy? Aluminum forming in aircraft repair is a skill that you should develop into craftsmanship that will serve today's needs in airframe repair. <laughs>